2022 is finally over, so now it's time to... <laughs> oh man, okay. Yeah, I have way too many sneakers. Yeah, so as I was saying, I have uh, way too many sneakers. Uh, just like last year, I'm going to go over my entire sneaker collection, basically like an archive of my sneaker collection from year to year. Uh, this year, I am proud of myself. I did manage to sell around like 20 sneakers, but I still don't know how many sneakers are in my entire sneaker collection. Uh, when uh, people ask me how many sneakers I have, all I can really tell them is, uh, uh, too many. I'm gonna say I have less than a hundred. This video will showcase every sneaker in my collection. I'm gonna showcase all sneakers from all brands. Uh, you guys know I'm mostly New Balance focused, but I do have sneakers from other brands like Nike, Adidas, and Saucony. And I'm also gonna be showcasing my dress and work shoes, which will be fun as well. So without further ado, this is my entire sneaker collection at the end of 2022. Let's start off with my non-lifestyle shoes. Uh, these are my work shoes as well as my one pair of dress shoes. Uh, the dress shoes being these uh, Allen Edmonds Park Avenues. These are made in America. They're black leather. Very classy as you can probably tell. They're just dress shoes but uh, I do like how they're made in America and they're simple and clean for formal events. And next we have two work shoes that I don't really wear anymore due to my new profession. I'll get into that uh, after these shoes. First is the New Balance 806 V1. This is a work shoe designed for uh, basically restaurant environments. It has a non-slip sole, it has a fuel cell in the midsole, and it's waterproof on the top. Uh, I think it's pretty comfortable. Uh, despite it being slip resistant, it isn't uh, the it doesn't necessarily excel in that, which uh, might sound a little bad, but I think it was still solid for what it is, especially it being inexpensive. And then next up are my triple black 990 V5s. Uh, I wore these a lot uh, during my time at my catering and special event company. I was constantly on my feet. I did a lot of heavy lifting uh, with equipment and food and uh, these served me well. For those of you who don't know, uh, by day I am a certified EMT and uh, because of that I have to wear boots for work and uh, they actually are a pair of New Balance boots surprisingly. These are uh, the New Balance 989 composite toe boots. Uh, part of our uniform requirement requires us to have composite or steel toes. Uh, so basically in the toe uh, there's this uh, hard composite shell that uh, protects our toes from heavy objects. I could drop the gurney on the toes of the shoes and my toes would be protected which is awesome. And the good thing about composite toe versus steel toe is that uh, they're basically just as strong while not being as heavy and they don't set off metal detectors. And the shoe overall uh, is made out of synthetic materials. I honestly want to do a dedicated review on this boot uh, later on in 2023, so stay tuned for that. But most of the shoe is made out of synthetic material, so they're good during uh, the wet environments. As for uh, my EMT work, uh, these have held up well for me, and uh, I think they're an excellent boot for uh, EMS professionals. All right, now let's move on to the main portion of the video, uh, that being lifestyle sneakers. Uh, I guess the main portion of the main portion would be my New Balance collection, but uh, I think I'm going to tackle the other brands first, and I think I'll start off with the brands in which I basically only have one shoe in. Uh, first up, we have a Richie Lee collaboration with Collegium in the Stone Sage Suede uh, Pillar Destroyer High. This is an awesome Italian-made shoe that's inspired by retro Nike models. A lot of people uh, can probably tell this is heavily inspired inspired by the uh, Air Jordan 1. It's also inspired by the Blazer and I think the Terminator, but don't quote me on that. Uh, this is Italian made. Uh, it's an excellent model. Collegium makes high quality shoes. Uh, they're all made in Italy. The price is definitely more expensive than a typical pair of shoes. Uh, uh, this retailed for uh, $250. It's definitely more expensive, but it's definitely not a designer shoe price. So overall, I really love Collegium as a brand and this collaboration with Richie Lee was awesome. Next up is my only pair of Converse's. Uh, this, as you can probably tell, is a CDG Play collaboration. I really don't wear this pair anymore. As you can probably, I don't know if you can tell from in the video, but 
it's very dusty. I really haven't worn this pair in years. I should probably sell it off, but uh, it's interesting to look back. Uh, I know this collaboration isn't really that popular anymore. I remember a few years ago when this was uh, very popular and pretty much everyone wore these and you'd see them more often than regular uh, Converse's, so that was pretty interesting. I still think they're a fine shoe, but I really don't wear it. And next up is my only pair of Sockenies, this being the Feature Bacon and Eggs collaboration. This is a very fire collaboration from Feature on this model. Uh, it's a made in China shoe, but the materials are excellent. And you guys know me, I love food themed shoes. And I think the bacon and eggs theme on this shoe just looks excellent. And uh, it's just a really dope collaboration. Continuing on with food themed shoes is the best pair of shoes in my collection with the KFC Crocs. This is by far the most prized shoe in my collection. It's just so fire. Uh, unfortunately, I can't wear this outside because uh, whenever women see me wearing this shoe, they instantly jump on me. So uh, it gets a little dangerous for me. So I can't really wear these, unfortunately. I mean, come on, the chicken drumstick on the front of the shoe is just so fire. Definitely the best shoe in my collection. Next up is my first ever pair of Carhus in the avocado and brown sugar colorway. It's on the Fusion 2.0 silhouette. This is the second shoe I ever received for free in my YouTube career, uh, which is awesome. Uh, shout out Huckberry for that. Uh, this shoe is pretty awesome. I think the colorway is great. The quality on the suede is amazing. I'd say it's on par with uh, New Balance made models. And uh, overall, I was was really satisfied with my first ever Carhu shoe. Next up are two pairs of Vans in my collection. Next up are two pairs of Vans. First up is a uh, custom made by Major Waves. As you can see, there are jewel uh, Takashi Murakami flowers on the front of the shoe, as well as in, as in the back. It's really dope. Unfortunately, I don't wear this too much. I think it's a dope art piece, and uh, it's on the Vans old school in the classic black and white colorway, which is cool. And next up is the orange orange NASA Vans collaboration. Uh, honestly, this is one of the first pairs of shoes that really just got me into sneakers. Back then, I just wore uh, whatever running shoes uh, my parents would buy me. Uh, they were comfortable and I didn't really care too much about shoes or fashion, uh, but obviously Vans were popular. Uh, they're still popular to this day, just Vans uh, as a silhouette. And I was really big into space and uh, of course I thought NASA was cool, so I thought it was really cool to see See NASA do a collaboration on a van silhouette and so this was uh, the first ever pair of kind of like hyped up sneakers I bought and uh, this was one of the shoes that helped kickstart my but on a more serious note uh, this shoe is really dope there are a lot of cool details around this shoe and next up are two pairs of Diodoras both of which are made in Italy and designed by Leo Colachico I'm not 100% sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly but he's a very talented designer uh, this is the Lyon colorway. It's made out of various uh, materials. Fur, it's meant to mimic like animals as well as some really high quality suede. Uh, the N9000 is the silhouette on both of these. Uh, they're not too comfortable, but the reason why I buy Diodores is because of their excellent quality as well as the dope colorways. And uh, this one is a Monopoly collaboration, which is pretty cool. Uh, this released uh, a few years ago, I think. It came came with a mini uh, Monopoly game, which is pretty cool. Uh, the quality is excellent, and I just love the loud colorway. And next up are my two pairs of Asics shoes. Uh, first up is a collaboration with Size in the Balloon Fiesta collaboration. I think uh, this collaboration is really cool. It's kind of a low-key heat type of shoe. Uh, it's a mostly black upper, but then you get the panels of the checkerboard, the multicolor checkerboard which is pretty cool and the insoles have a hot air balloon uh, as per the collaboration balloon fiesta and uh, it's on the gel saga model and next up is one of my favorite asics collaborations in the sean watherspoon and atmos collaboration just like sean watherspoon's air max collaboration it consists of an almost all corduroy upper which is awesome i love corduroy as material i think it should be utilized on sneakers more often and uh it's a very loud Shoe. If you look at this shoe by itself, you already think it's a loud shoe, but if you didn't know about this pair, uh, the other shoe is actually mismatched and is in a completely different colorway, so it is a very loud and wild collaboration.
inspiration and I love it. And now let's move on to my Adidas collection. I have four pairs of Adidas. Uh, first up is a pair of classics. We got a pair of Stan Smiths. It's just a very simple and classic shoe. I love the hit of green in the back. It's very iconic and really nothing much else to say about them. Next up is probably my most worn pair of Adidas shoes and probably just one of my most worn of pairs of sneakers ever uh, in this uh, gray four uh, Adidas Ultra Boost. Uh, it's a pretty simple colorway. It looks like just a gray and white colorway, but if you look closer, uh, it actually has hints of green in the knit, which is pretty cool. Uh, I ran in this shoe. Uh, I wore it as a casual shoe. It's been through a lot, as you can see in the outsole. I think the original Ultra Boost uh, silhouette is still a really nice looking silhouette. I think it's still really comfortable, and I think Boost is still a really good sneaker technology. Speaking of Boost, this is my one pair of Yeezys. I got these uh, back when uh, the Boost type uh, kind of died down, maybe a few years after. The Zebra colorway for the 350 has uh, restocked uh, a multitude of times, which is awesome because this was uh, my favorite colorway. It's, at the time, I was pretty much just indifferent to Kanye West. Like, I wasn't really a fan of him or his music, nor was I really against him or anything. But uh, in terms of sneakers, uh, these were one of the sneakers that caught my eye before I was really into sneakers and this colorway in particular I thought it was just really cool and different like you got the uh, lettering the Spli 350 I thought that was kind of cool and uh, when I first tried on a pair of Yeezys from my friends uh, they were really comfortable and uh, I fell in love uh, nowadays uh, I know uh, Kanye West uh, is definitely a little controversial I'll just leave it at that but in terms of the shoes uh, I still love this pair of Zebra 350s. And rounding out my Adidas collection is this uh, special edition pair of All Points Bulletin Form 84 Lows. This is a very clean colorway for the Form 84 Low. It's a very low-key heat type of shoe. There are only 500 pairs of these. I have pair uh, 94 out of 500, which is pretty dope. And now I'm going to move on to my Nike and Jordan collection. Before I was real big into New Balance and uh, smaller sneakers, brands. Like most people, I was really big into Nike and Jordans, but since then I have massively decreased uh, my Nike and Jordan collection uh, and it's been reduced to down to only six pairs. And uh, so let's start off with this awesome uh, Atlanta Olympics Nike Air Trainer High. Uh, this is a very dope and kind of rare pair of Nike Air Trainers. Uh, I think the colorway is really dope. Obviously it was made uh, to commemorate the uh, 96 Olympics. Uh, I think the colorway is really cool. I really love the loud outsole. Next up is one of two Air Presto mids. Uh, I think this is like the cool gray or space gray colorway. I'm not 100% sure of what you call this colorway, but it's actually waterproof. I think it, this is a really cool, kind of like a tech wear pair of shoes. Goes well with all black outfits, and if you're wearing like a black windbreaker, it's really cool. And even though I'm not really big into Nike anymore, uh, the Presto has probably been one of my favorite Nike silhouettes. I really love how different it is, and uh, despite the looks of it, the Presto is actually a very comfortable model. And next up we have the acronym Racer Pink Presto Mid. This is a very fire collaboration. I got this pair months after it originally dropped uh, for under retail on the used market and I was so happy. Uh, this is a very fire collaboration. I just love how loud it is and I love the techie aesthetic. It, I don't re really wear it often but it's such a fun shoe to have in the collection. And next up is one of three Jordans in my collection. Uh, first First we have the uh, Bread Toe Ones. This is my personal favorite color blocking of the Jordan 1. I know uh, the Bread Toe actually isn't an OG colorway, but I think uh, the color blocking is just the best. And uh, even though it's not OG, I still prefer it over the Breads in Chicago's. Next up is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated Jordan 3s of all time in the Tinker Hatfield Air Max Jordan 3. I think just the colorway alone is really nice, but the fact that it's based off the Air Max 
X1's OG colorway is really cool, and the interchangeable swooshes is also really cool. Uh, obviously, you can see I use the red swoosh, but it also came with a white swoosh to kind of uh, mask the Nike swoosh, as well as a gray suede swoosh, and I think a, a different color, but I'm not too sure. I think the uh, red swoosh in the best, and uh, I think this uh, Jordan 3 is criminally underrated. And lastly for Nike and Jordans is the classic Jordan 11 in the Concord colorway. Definitely an iconic shoe, a very clean and versatile shoe too. The Jordan 11 is one of the most iconic uh, Jordan models of all time, and I think the Concord colorway is one of the best and most versatile colorways in the lineup. And uh, it's definitely not the most comfortable shoe in the world, but the patent leather, I mean the signature patent leather is just so cool on the shoe. And it's definitely an essential for any Jordan lover. All right, now to the main event of the sneaker collection video, and that would be my New Balance collection and as you can probably tell I have way too many new balances and uh, first I'm gonna start off with the non-made models first up are my two pairs of X racers aka the XRCTs uh, the X racer is an excellent lifestyle slash hiking model uh, this uh, colorway in particular uh, I think it's called the Mirage colorway I like to call it the Spyro the Dragon colorway uh, I actually wore hiking multiple times uh, it's it's a very solid pair of hiking shoes. Uh, my feet uh, stayed comfortable during the hikes and they're also pretty durable and the colorway is also pretty dope. And then this is a collaboration between Staple Pigeon and Atmos and the tongue of the shoe is actually made out of some faux hair meant to uh, imitate uh, the hair on a pigeon which is pretty funny. And next up is my only pair of 327s in the navy and red colorway. This is what I like to call a shoe that's already color blocked. Uh, navy, white, and red is an excellent colorway uh, in terms of outfits, so it's awesome to have a shoe that's already color blocked in that colorway. And next up is my only pair of Kawhis. This is the Kawhi one in the Jolly Rancher collaboration. Uh, it also has a special Kawhi Leonard uh, Jolly Rancher branding at the top of the shoe. I managed to get this pair used in pretty good condition for only like $60, which was an absolute steal. It's definitely one of my favorite uh, food themes shoes in my collection. Speaking of basketball shoes, next up are two pairs of vintage New Balance basketball shoes. First up is the Retro uh, 515 model. This is one of my favorite uh, vintage pair of New Balances. Uh, it just looks so fresh and I love how this pair has aged. Uh, this pair uh, I think was just kept in storage and wasn't really worn when I got it. Uh, thankfully this is a hard rubber outsole shoe meaning it is still wearable as long as it wasn't like abused. Uh, the midsole is still sturdy and is still wearable. And next up is my first ever pair of vintage New Balances in the uh, New Balance BB800 uh, James Worthy Lakers colorway. Obviously yellow, purple, and white is the Lakers colorway and this was a shoe that was worn by James Worthy back when he played basketball professionally. It's still cool that this was an OG pair from when uh, New Balance still did basketball and uh, they endorsed players. And then they eventually left the basketball market and uh, sponsoring players altogether. They had an endorsed by no one campaign but of course uh, a few years ago they went back to basketball and they picked up Kawhi Leonard and now they have even more basketball players and basketball shoes. And next up are my four pairs of 550s. I'll try to go through these quickly. First up is the 550 in the white and team red colorway. This used to be my most popular video uh, the review on these which was pretty cool. Next up is is the burgundy and teal 550. This was my favorite 550 GR of 2022. Uh, it released earlier on in the year and I think it's still a very fire GR even to this day. And next up are two 550s that released last year. We got the navy and yellow colorway and the yellow and white colorway. And next up are my four pairs of 2002 R's. First up is the incense and heliotrope colorway. Uh, this is a very fire GR that released earlier on in 2022 and it's still 
one of my favorite GRs that released this year. Next up is the first ever pair of shoes I received for free in my YouTube career. Uh, shout out Huckberry. This is the 2002R in the Deep Ocean colorway. It's a very fire colorway from the Higher Learning or Suede pack and I love the contrasting dusty rose outsole. Next up is my favorite colorway from the Refined Future pack in the Navy colorway. Uh, I think the contrasting navy and blue tones are awesome as well as the cream white accents and I think it fits the refined future aesthetic really well. And next up is my pair of Water Be The Guide Salehi Bembry 2002 R's. I really love this collaboration. This was one of my favorite collabs uh, from 2021. Speaking of Salehi Bembry collaborations, uh, next up I have the yurt in the shark colorway. The yurt is actually Salehi Bembry's uh, original silhouette. Well technically it's a spin on the 574. The full name is 574 yurt. Uh, it's a very chunky midsole. It's not the com most comfortable shoe in the world, but the suede quality is excellent and all the Salehi Bembry details are awesome. And of course, the signature. Speaking of 574s, uh, I surprisingly only have one pair of traditional 574s and that would be the unending Grey Day pair of 574s. This was part of last year's New Balance Grey Day pack. Uh, I forgot what it dropped alongside but this was my personal favorite of the pack. I just really love how it's a 574 but they dropped the N logo. I just think it's a really cool look. It kind of looks like the uh, sneaker emoji. I'll flash it up. It just looks exactly like that like the sneaker emoji just looks like the 574 without the N logo so I think that's really funny. And next up is my pair of Bodega 574 Legacies. The 574 Legacy was a new model for 2022 and Bodega did a collaboration on them. I think they did a pretty good job in the colorway but uh, unfortunately the collaboration wasn't that popular and uh, I only bought this because they went on an absolute steal price on Joe's New Balance outlet but after getting them in hand I can definitely say that uh, it's a pretty great collaboration. Speaking of Bodega collaborations, next up is the Bodega 997S in the uh, Better Days Ahead collaboration. Uh, this is one of three 997S Bodega collaborations. Uh, this uh, was one of the shoes that really got me into New Balances, uh, the Bodega collaboration pack on the 997, and it was really cool to get this pair uh, back when it originally dropped. Next up in my collection is the original Snow Island RC Elite collaboration. A lot of people didn't really care too much when they saw the initial reveal of the Stone Island collaboration. They were hoping for a made model or even a 2002R, but I personally really like the Stone Island collaboration at first sight. I personally think uh, the RC Elite V2 is a very fitting model for a Stone Island collaboration since their clothing is kind of geared toward performance and tech, so I think a performance running shoe was good, and I, I just really love the overall aesthetic. If you look closely, it's actually the same aesthetic as the Refined Future pack, and that's because it was designed by the same designer, uh, Yue Wu, and uh, I think the Stone Island branding is also pretty cool on the shoe. And next up are my two pairs of RC 1300s. First up is a GR in the Workwear colorway. This is a great fall shoe. Uh, just really, it's because of the colorway. I mean, that golden brown is awesome. And next up is one of my favorite Kith collaborations of all time in the antler colorway on the RC 1300. I mean just the colorway alone is really fire but uh, it's a kith collaboration so there are a lot of details around the shoe. I mean in the end logo you got the kith monogram which is awesome. Uh, it's a very rock solid collaboration and the antler colorway was my personal favorite from the pack. Before we move on to the made models uh, I thought I would combine uh, the three sneakers in my ALD collection into one block since they consists of a main USA shoe, a main UK shoe, as well as an imported model. Uh, I have the uh, 991 in the tan colorway. This was my personal favorite ALD collaboration of 2022. I thought the colorway was fire and I really loved how they used leather instead of the traditional suede and the leather was really high quality and I thought it contrasted well with the off-white and the green. And then next up we have the ALD 993 
in uh, the taupe haze colorway. I think that's what you call it. I forgot the exact name. I'll flash up a correction. But uh, I think this is a pretty dope collaboration on the 993. I really love the colorway. A lot of people prefer the beef and broccoli colorway better. And next up is my pair of ALD Rainiers in the brown and green colorway. The Rainier is a retro hiking boot model from the 80s. I actually have a pair of OGs right here. Uh, this is actually made in the USA. It's in a brown leather and navy uh, canvas colorway. It's very dope. It's an awesome vintage model. So it was really cool to see New Balance bring back the model as well as have ALD do their work on the model. Oh, I actually forgot about one more ALD collaboration. This is the uh, 1300 in the green colorway. I forgot the exact uh, tone of green. I really how it's a mostly hairy suede upper and overall a very solid collaboration with ALD. Now that the special ALD portion of the video is done, I'm going to move on to my main UK collection. Starting off with my only pair of uh, 577s. This is in the desaturated colorway. This was one of my favorite GRs of 2021. I just really love the colorway. I love how it's a mostly earth tone shoe in the front, but then you get this pop of purple and orange as well as that cool shade of golden yellow in the end logo. Next up is one of my first ever pair of New Balances and that is the 920 in the multicolor colorway. It's mostly that baby blue upper with accents of black and orange as well as neon green. I think it's a very fire colorway and uh, the 920 is a very comfortable silhouette since it utilizes the same midsole as the 990 V3. And next up is my first ever pair of 1500s in the purple salt colorway. This is an older colorway that I got years ago and I managed to get it for I think only a hundred dollars which is pretty cool. And I got two more pairs of 1500s this year. Both of these were on my top 40 new balances of the year. First up is the uh, selected edition 1500. I really love how loud and colorful it is as well as the materials and the glow in the dark 1500. Uh, it, it's a pretty solid colorway in the light but it's got that uh, special glow in the dark trick in the dark. And next up is an SNS collaboration on the 991. This pack was based off an older collaboration between SNS and the 577. So it was cool that they brought the same colorways on the 991. And it was a pretty solid collaboration, great colorway, and great materials used. And lastly, for my main UK shoes is the newly retroed 730. Uh, this 730 was part of the 40th anniversary pack. And what I love about this shoe is how it looks like a vintage pair. Uh, as I keep saying, if you were to say that this was a vintage pair and put it on eBay and uh, hit the tags, you could easily fool me. All right, now we'll move on to the majority of the majority of my collection, and that would be the Main USA New Balance models. Because this is 2022 and majority of my channel was reviewing the Teddy Santis models, I'll start off with those, but I want to save some time. And because I've done a thorough review on all 16 pairs, from season one. I'll flash up a picture of all 16 pairs. And uh, in terms of what I got to say, uh, you guys already know, uh, I've done a ranking on all of them. I've done reviews on all of them. Uh, it was my favorite release by far of 2022. And I can't wait to see the rest of season two as well as the beginning of season three in 2023. Speaking of season two, we have my first pair from season two. Uh, I don't plan on collecting all 15 pairs from season two, but uh, this was the first pair I caught from season two. This is the olive green, navy, and tan colorway on the V3. It's a pretty rock solid earth tone shoe. It's great for the fall winter season and it's another solid pair from Teddy Santis. Now I'll move on to the 99X series. I'll start off with the 99X series uh, from uh, lowest number to highest model and then I'll end off the video with the 990 series from version 1 to version 6. First up would be my 992 collection. First up we have a collaboration between concepts. This is the, I think it, they called the low hanging fruit collaboration. As you can tell, this is heavily inspired by a kiwi fruit. And on the inside, you get a strawberry insole, which is pretty cool. I forgot the exact story behind it, but there was an interesting story behind the collaboration, uh, like all concepts collaborations. This is a very wild and loud uh, collaboration. Next up is a 992GR. Uh, 
I think this was called like the gray, blue, and teal colorway. I mean, that's literally just all the colors. You also got the yellow laces and the back tab. This was one of my favorite GRs last year. I really love how it's a mostly neutral shoe, but you get pops of the blue, teal, and yellow, which makes it a solid colorway. Next up is the last 992 GR that dropped before the 992 went back in the vault, and that is the black and blue colorway. I really like this colorway. It's another rock solid 992 GR. And next up was my favorite GR of 2021, and that is the burgundy and yellow 992. I just love this shade of burgundy and the pop of yellow in the end logo as well as the back tab. Uh, I just think this is a rock solid GR that looks good year round, whether it be the warmer seasons or the cold seasons. This is still a favorite of mine. And then my last pair of 992s is this very aged and unfortunately broken pair of gray 992s. I mean, it doesn't get more classic than this. Other than my ALD 993s, I have one other 993 and that is the pink Susan G. Komen 993. Uh, it's a, in collaboration with Susan G. Komen. Uh, the proceeds went to the foundation for breast cancer, uh, which is awesome. And next we have my only pair of traditional 997s in the pastel or spring color 997. This is a very fire pastel colorway. You get the light green in the toe box. You get the blue around the end logo on the back as well as the eraser pink tongue. It's a very solid 997 colorway. I wish they would bring the traditional 997 back. And next up are two Main USA 997 sport models. Again, New Balance just does pink so well. The shade of rose pink is awesome and the pebbled gray leather in the back is awesome. It's a very high quality pair of shoes and I personally really like the look of the 997S uh, Main USA. I think it is a great model and I wish they would make more of it. And lastly is the Main USA 997S in the baited colorway. This is one of my favorite pairs in my collection. You guys know I love the loud pairs and this is definitely a very loud pair. You get an explosion of colors. I mean it's just wow. It's just a very head turning shoe and it's full of crazy colors on an awesome silhouette. And next up we have my personal favorite New Balance silhouette of all time in the 998. First up we have the burgundy and teal colorway. It's a pretty solid GR colorway for the 998. And next up we have a very beat up and worn pair of J Crew condiments 998. Obviously this is a collaboration with J Crew and it's meant to imitate the condiments that you'd find on a hot dog like ketchup, mustard, and relish. It's a pretty solid collaboration but unfortunately this pair probably needs to be retired. And my last 998 is actually my first ever pair of New Balances and probably still one of my favorite pairs in my collection and that is the Fishing Blue 998. Uh, it at first glance it just looks like a blue 998 but upon closer inspection you can look at all the cool details. You can look at the Fish Scale 3M which is very dope and the various shades of blue is also very fire. Uh, the 3M accents are awesome and overall it's a very underrated 998 and is still one of my favorites in my collection despite being my first ever pair I bought. And now I'll round off the video with the 990 version starting with version 1. First up we have the 990 V1 in the version series edition. This is just the classic gray 990 V1 but with special uh, version accents. This version series uh, was found on the 990 V2, V3, and V4. Uh, I think the version series V5 will eventually drop in 2023 now that the V6 is out but I'm not too sure. But uh, this is still a really dope pair. I mean it's the 990 V1 in the classic gray colorway. You can't really go wrong. And next up is one of my favorite collabs of this year in the Carhartt Work in Progress 990 V1. I love this collaboration. I think the aesthetic and colorway, I think the aesthetic and colorway really matches Carhartt Work in Progress as a brand. I love the hairy navy suede and I love the subtle details around the shoe as well. And next up are my 990 V2s. We'll start off with the core black colorway. This is one of the three core colorways. It's very simple and clean and you can't go wrong with a black 990. And next up is one of the most popular GRs of 2021 and that is the uh, multicolor 990 V2. I mean this was an amazing GR and I personally think this shoe really encapsulates what New Balance is about. It's high quality GRs that are accessible. And lastly 
we have the Kith Cyclades 990V2. This is a great summer shoe. I just love the baby blue in the back and then the bright orange in the front. I think Kith did an excellent job on translating the 997.5 colorway onto the 990V2. 990V2 is my personal favorite looking silhouette from the 990 version series. Moving on to version 3. First up, we have this great GR from last year. It's the black, green, and yellow colorway. It's a rock solid GR. I really love how it's color blocked. It's a mostly black upper, you get, but you get the pops of green and yellow. And next up is a pretty underrated shoe in my opinion. I think I'm one of the very few YouTubers to actually review this shoe, but that is the black and red Winterize 990V3. It replaces the traditional mesh with 3M thin slit technology to make the shoe more warm around your feet as well as make it a bit more waterproof. And uh, I think uh, black and red is a combination that New Balance needs to make more. As you can probably tell, I really like black and red. And uh, I think it looks pretty great on the 990v3. And lastly, we have a criminally underrated collaboration from this year. And that is the DTLR Miami Drive 990v3. I really love how it's like a gray 990v3, but with the Miami colors splashed onto it. I think it's an excellent summer collaboration. And uh, I think it flew under the radar and uh, if it's still available for retail, I'd say jump on it because I feel like this shoe uh, will increase in price as years go on. And next up is my only pair of 990 V4. Moving on to my V5s. First up, I have two core colorways. I have the core gray colorway and the core navy colorway. Both of them are very simple and clean and go well with any outfits. The V5 is definitely a very comfortable silhouette and it was my personal favorite, uh, most comfortable New Balance uh, until I tried on the V6. And next up we have a very loud and dope uh, popsicle colorway on the V5. I really love how this is reminiscent of the Bomb Pop popsicle. It is very fire and very loud. You guys know I love me a loud shoe and I think it works well on the V5. And lastly we have the Slow Steady collaboration on the V5 in the Mocha Brown colorway. I think Slow Steady Club did an excellent job on this V5. I didn't care for the other V5 colorway. I thought it looked too much like a GR, but uh, this mocha brown colorway is very fire, and I also love the pop of orange in the back, as well as the insoles of the shoes. Alright, we've made it to the end. Rounding off my entire sneaker collection are my two pairs of 990 V6s. First up, we'll go with the most viewed video on my channel. I was so happy to find these on the aftermarket before the V6 came out. Uh, this navy colorway has yet to officially release so this is a very early pair I mean I I've said my praises about the v6 uh, enough already I'm sure you guys already know I love how it takes a bigger departure in terms of the design from the v5 v4 and v3 and I love the addition of fuel cell and the midsole I like how it makes it softer uh, the navy colorway is pretty solid but of course you can't beat the core gray colorway. This was my most anticipated shoe of 2022 and uh, I was really happy to get it in hand and uh, these two shoes have been probably been my most worn pairs of 2022. Uh, they're just so comfortable and they go well with any outfit. And that was my entire sneaker collection. I have way too many pairs but it was cool to take a look at my entire collection and archive the collection. I'm probably going to sell off more pairs on the first few months of 2023 uh, to reduce the collection and of course uh, because uh, I'm going to be copying more new pairs that come out in the year 2023. Uh, there are a lot of cool uh, Teddy Santa season 2 and season 3 pairs that are going to be coming out and I will also want to cop new pairs from other brands, uh, brands other than New Balance. So what do you guys think of my sneaker collection? Uh, what are your favorite pairs from my collection and what brand should I check out? Uh, I know I'm mostly a New Balance guy but I'm really open to a smaller lesser known sneaker brands and uh, just more underrated brands so I definitely like to know down in the comments. So that's going to do it for this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Follow me on my socials. Check out the Intelligent site for more New Balance content and guides. Consider leaving a super thanks and thanks for watching.